www.ssmc.com. Today I want to run through what's new with SSMC 3.2. We're here at the SSMC console. First thing you can do if you're at yours is take a look at what version you're on here in the bottom right corner. First thing to note is you can now create banners so that any administrators logging on can see that. I've got a Hi Mum banner here. You can use it to uh, wind up your colleagues or put out important messages if you're in a larger environment um, and you, for example, have some scheduled work going on. Next thing to note at Logon is that you can log on like I'm doing here as normal, but it also supports logging on from multiple domains. So if you could if you have an environment that consists of multiple domains, you can specify the one you want to log into um, in that type of manner. Okay, let's go ahead and log in. Okay, so once you get logged in, the dashboard itself at first is going to look quite familiar. However, this is where some of the fundamental changes exist. If you hover over the top of one of the panels, you're going to see this little line appear. And that basically means that you can you can drag that to exactly where you want it. So you can rearrange this um, to your heart's content. And these settings are saved as you come in and out of the system. You can also go into any of these and make changes. So for example, clicking on this pencil. Um, choose which systems you want that to relate to. Change the title of it. For example, I personally don't like to mess around with this default dashboard because um, it's the one we're used to and we may want to go back to it. So what you can do is create your own dashboard by clicking on this little cog. Create dashboard. Let's give it a name. Uh, we want this to be for all systems, so create and add panels. Okay, then we get this screen where we can choose what kind of panels um, we want. Some of them will be quite familiar to you, like the storage systems, performance, as these are already on the standard dashboard. However, there has been some quite nice additions, if I just scroll down a little bit. Um, we've got this um, new activity panel, which shows any anything that's happened in recent times, any key events. And then we've got some performance ones, which are really nice. Um, you can see top um, top hosts that are, it's called top host bandwidth, but you can adjust this so you can do top hosts by um, IOPS or, or latency or whatever measure you wish. Um, you can get an overall snapshot of the, of the system with that system performance panel. Um, and again, this is another nice top five one, and this one is related to the uh, the volumes. So let's go ahead and choose a few of these to add into our new dashboard. Um, I'm going to go for that system performance one. Um, let's add another performance one here. And finally, let's get the total capacity. So I'm going to keep this nice and simple just for this demo. Okay, so this is this is my now custom dashboard. You can see there. And if you want to switch between any of the dashboards or go back to the default one, that's where you do it from that drop down list. Um, again, you can come in here and grab a hold of it and move any of these around to your to your heart's content. You can go into any of these panels and customize them as much as you want. So let's choose the system performance as an example. Okay, so let's take a look at the kind of changes we can make in the system performance panel. We can change the title of it. Um, so let's say we want to do it for a certain site. So system performance um, DC data center one. Um, we can choose the metrics we want, so let's have all of them. Let's go for service time, bandwidth, IOPS, the time scope we want. That goes from one day right to three months. We want a snapshot, so we'll leave it at one day. Um, and then you can go ahead and then we click on OK. And there we go, we can see that customised uh, panel appearing. Um, so you can go ahead and you can do that on all these different panels. Again, if we have a quick look at the capacity one, 
you can see you can filter it at the moment it's showing us all device types if we just wanted to change this to fiber channel for example we could do that and then update the panel name to make that clear and we can see that's changed um, another change on the dashboard is you can easily click on this and see any current running tasks this here shows any new alerts since you last logged in or during the time you're logged in uh, the number of alerts and their severity is displayed by this colour and number indication I want to show you two last things very quickly first of all you're going to see this new filtering option at the top of the screen um, this works in two ways you can either have predefined fields for example with port type if we click here we can see these different options I could select disk for example just to see the port types of disk and then the other way it works is if we click here you can select what you want to filter on let's say you wanted to filter on port ID this one is not pre-populated and you would need to enter the port ID you wanted to filter on Lastly, you can customise and create your own views. If you want to customise the current view, you could just, for example, drag that column there, and that's going to shift over. If you want to choose what columns you want, come here and choose Edit View, or to create your own view, go Create View. Choose a name for that. Now what's nice is you can base it on an existing template so you're not starting completely from scratch. Um, let's say I don't want WWN but I want write errors. I click on create. And there we go, we're in the data dude view. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Next time we'll be covering the three-part simulator install. See you then.